Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and today we're going to be talking about the few books that I've read so far in November. So I've never done a mid-month wrap-up before, but here we are, here we are, we're gonna do it. If you would have watched the catastrophe that was my October wrap-up, I am very sorry. <laughs> Essentially, um, my phone is a really old model, really old iPhone model. It just likes to crash on me all the time and it happens a lot while I'm filming, especially long videos. If I keep a video under 20 minutes, we're good to go. So I thought that I might implement mid-month wrap-ups into my channel also because my wrap-ups were getting kind of long there so <laughs> today is november 14th um so we're one day away from midway through the month and so far i have read 11 books this month so let's dive right on in to these books I think for my mid-month wrap-up i kind of just want to do it in order and from now on because i normally in my wrap-ups i do from my least favorite to my favorite but i don't feel like rearranging the books right now so i'll just go in the order that i read them so there's actually one book on this list that i forgot to include in my October wrap-up because my wrap-up was quite a catastrophe and I forgot to talk about it. So this is the last book that I read in October and it was Dragon King by Charlene Hartnady. This is the third book in the Bride Hunt series. This is a dragon shifter romance series. Essentially women get put into this hunt where they're released into the wild and then an hour a couple of hours later the dragons come to find them and hunt them down and whichever dragon claims a human woman that is going to be their mate and so the hero of this story his name is blaze he's king of all of the dragons and it's his story about finding a mate our woman she like volunteered to be in the hunt because she just wants a mate to love her and cherish her because she's never really had that in her life she wants someone to love her um and then of course the one dragon that picks her who's blaze is the one dragon that doesn't want to fall in love he just wants a wife to have or a mate to have heirs for him but then of course they get to know one another long story short they fall in love of course it's a romance this is the third book again in a series i really recommend reading the previous books in the series or else you might be very confused with the world and the hunt especially and just Lace as a character maybe because he does get introduced in the two previous books. This book was honestly just okay. It was an okay book. Um, it took Blaze way too long in my opinion to admit his feelings to Roxy, our heroine. And I honestly feel like when he did finally admit his feelings, it was too late. Like if I was, if I was Roxy, I would have left him already because of how poorly he treated her. I do love the world building and the concept of the book in general. So I do hopefully plan on reading the rest of the series and hopefully they get better than this one. But I ended up just giving this one a three out of five stars. I then read two books in the Bedlam Butchers series by Ruby Dixon. This is her Motorcycle Club series. I read book five and book six and I only have one more book to read and then I'm done with this series. But the last book in this series is not a under 100 page book like the rest of these so it's taken me a little bit to get through. So book number five in the series is Double or Nothing. Sometimes the series talks about different characters or centered around a different character but then another book in the series is centered around the same couple or a different couple. So essentially this couple in book five is the couple we have been reading out reading about for the past three books so book number three four and five is about the same thruple not thruple because the guys don't get together you know um so you have muscle beast and um shy i've talked about their books previously but this is their finale like this is their last book like this is where their story romance story wraps up in this romance series motorcycle men in this motorcycle club they share everything in pairs like they go on rides together they eat together they live together and they share women together <laughs> and so muscle and beast end up sharing shy and shy loves both of them um and so yeah this is the continuation to their story you do need to read the previous books obviously to understand this because this is the third continuation like the third book of their story you know and so i really enjoyed this one i like their ending story and so i gave this one a four to five stars and then book six is actually revisiting the couple from book one um so book one was about lucky and solo and they're actually the only like two person couple in the whole entire club because she is the only woman who is also part of the motorcycle club all the other women aren't in the club they're not a motorcycle club member um but lucky is the only one she is the sister to the president of the club um and so lucky and solo they are a pair together it says in the summary but she finds out she's pregnant and like that's the whole story here this was the conclusion to lucky and solo story so i I did like that. This book honestly was okay for me. I've never really liked Lucky and Solo. They're like my least favorite part of this series in general, The Bedlam Butchers, but I did think that it set up the last book in the series really well because the last book in the series is about Lucky's sister who we haven't read a book from at all yet. And um, she gets kidnapped by a rivaling motorcycle club. 
and she falls for some guys there so I'm very interested in that last book. So I just gave this one a three out of five stars. Okay, now we're gonna talk about a few books from my favorite authors, of course, and some rereads, okay? Um, I reread I Don't Want by Grace Draven. I love Grace Draven. Grace Draven wrote um, my favorite romance book ever. I don't know where it is. Oh, it's right here. Grace Draven, of course, wrote Radiance if you didn't know, my favorite romance book ever. This is the continuation to that story. Since this is the continuation to that story, I can't go, go too deep into this, but this is all about Brishan and Ildiko all over again. If you didn't love Radiance because it was more character-based, I love character-based romances, so I don't care if there's a book about Ildiko and Brishan just eating dinner for 500 pages, I will I will I will read it you know um, so if you thought Radiance is a little bit too slow for you or there was nothing really going on plot wise I really recommend picking up book two because there is a battle there's evil creatures called the Gala trying to destroy their kingdom there's political intrigue court politics a little bit um, magic magic like if you wanted more from the magic in book one magic is in this one magic is in this one like our hero becomes like this giant magical entity like it's very interesting i don't want to talk too much about it because it could spoil stuff yeah if you didn't know about radiance this is a fantasy romance um we have the woman is ildiko um she is a human and she gets in an arranged marriage in the first book with brishan who is prince of the kai they're both spares to their kingdom and they're both put in this marriage to form an alliance between their two kingdoms they both find the other one super repulsive and ugly but they love their personality and who they are on the inside they become very close friends and then their friendship turns into something more obviously um it's an amazing friends to lovers and uh, this book is just a really great continuation into their story obviously i of course gave this book five out of five stars <laughs> i got another reread for you so i was feeling a little slumpy this month and i was like i just want to pick up a comfort read a book i can listen to and just like feel happy and so i picked up my favorite book in the ice planet barbarian series we have barbarian's redemption by ruby dixon this is book number 13 in the series and this book is so worth the wait um it is book number 13 i don't recommend you jumping to this at all I mean, you could do whatever you want to do. I'm not the reading police, obviously. But this one, I feel like really pays off once you get to know like Beck as a hero and you read about him throughout the whole entire series and you learn about him. So this book is about Beck, one of the alien characters you read about in the Ice Planet Barbarian series. And he, by some means, you read about in the book, ends up buying human slaves and doesn't think it's a bad thing. Don't worry, he gets taught throughout this book how buying slaves is very bad but they don't have money where they are from they don't understand what is going on but he by some means ends up buying a bunch of human women that were going to be slaves for evil aliens ends up bringing them to his ice planet because he desperately 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 wants a mate and he's been waiting for years for one and so he does find his mate with the one who doesn't want one at all this is a romance between ellie and beck Ellie is one of the human women who were on the spaceship that came to the ice planet. However, Ellie has been a part, been a human slave for years. Since she was a young girl, she has been in a cage for long. It's very grotesque. It's, there's a few trigger warnings, so please look them up. And so she doesn't speak at all. She doesn't speak at all. And Beck is very baffled by this. He doesn't understand her at first. But once they, he realizes that they are mates, he will do anything for her, obviously. But he is in trouble for doing this to he, these women, like taking them to the planet. He is in trouble by the clan. And so he's kind of like banished from the clan. And Ellie starts to realize that Beck may be her protector. Um, and she goes after him to stay in a cave with him. This is my favorite one in the series. I adore... Beck and Ellie so much and their romance and how Ellie grows as a person because at the beginning of this book she's not really a, like she doesn't feel like she's a person at all like she feels like she's a thing throughout this book Beck helps her realize how amazing of a person she is and oh my word this book makes me swoon so much I know that people sometimes don't like Beck and I totally get it I feel like he's kind of like redeemed in this book kind of like he learns from his mistakes you know of course I gave this a five out of five stars I love this reread I then read the long-awaited uh, the Ippos King by Grace Draven, which is the third book in the Wraith King series. So it's the next book to I Don't Want that I just talked about earlier. Um, I've been waiting to read this for quite a while and I don't know what took me so long to read this, um, but I, I think I was just intimidated. I get, I get like that sometimes with new releases um, where I'll put them off 
because I know that I'm gonna love them and I don't know I don't know why some people I feel like feel the same way so let me know down below but this is the romance between Anuzette and Saravek who you've met in Radiance and Eidolon Anuzette is a Kai woman and Saravek is a human man who is very close relations with a king so he's like kind of like a lord a little bit but it's a fantasy land so it's called a different name you know and Anuzette is the right hand man uh to Brishan so she's like leader of all of the Kai warriors you know this unfortunately was not a full five out of five stars for me which is very baffling for me and very surprising if you don't know I adore Grace Draven and I have given many 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 of her books five stars this one I gave her 4.5 out of 5. I honestly think though it was my fault. Um, I've been in a very slumpy mood so far this month and this book took me over a week to listen to, which does not happen for me. I normally listen to an audiobook all in one day or in two at the most and this took me over one week and I didn't really feel myself gravitating towards it, you know? If that makes sense like it took me forever to read and so i'd forget things that happened and so i didn't like adore this as much as i adored the past two books in the series don't get me wrong i adored the romance in here and was that in Saravek, their romance was good it was hot it was entertaining but i think it's just my bad where i didn't like i wasn't in the mood i don't think and i forced myself to read something i wasn't in the mood for but i'm definitely going to reread this sometime soon and we will see sorry there i think there's an eyelash on me <laughs> Anyway, I think we're gonna reread this very soon, or I'm gonna read this very soon. Um, so if you want to buddy read this, let me know. I'm gonna probably do a reread over winter break, I want to say possibly. We'll see though. Um, <laughs> don't count me on that. But uh, yeah, that's why this wasn't a full five stars for me, and that's totally, totally my fault. I have another reread for you. We have <laughs> Barbarians Touched by Ruby Dixon. <laughs> I was just in a reread mood for Ice Planet Barbarians. And I've been listening to them to fall asleep, like listening to them while I fall asleep. And like, I've been loving it, honestly. So I decided to pick up book number eight. This is another one of my top five favorites. I don't remember where it's ranked, but it's in my um, Ultimate Guide to Ruby Dixon video. I'll link it down below, um, where I rank every single book and talk about every book in the My Spin of Barbarian series. This one is definitely in my top five. This is one is about Rokan and Lila. And oh my god, this one's so good. And so the uh, aliens on this planet, they end up finding another spaceship. They find out there's two women in cryosleep in this um, spaceship and they wake them up and Lila and her sister Maddie are those two women. Lila is deaf and apparently the aliens who abducted her took out her cochlear implant so she cannot hear anymore. And one of the alien men, a part of the tribe, end up taking her to a cave, like stealing her and taking her to a cave in hopes that they will become mates, you know? Nothing is like forced upon them, obviously. Like they have a cooey in their body which will hum and vibrate whenever they found their mate. And so they're hoping that if they're in close proximity with one another, then their cooey will hum and they will be mates. However, that doesn't happen. And so Lila cannot hear this alien. She cannot hear him. She cannot understand him. And so she's just sitting there petrified, not knowing what is going on. And so Rokan just feels like he needs to save her. And so he finds her and saves her and they go on this long journey together on this ice planet and they spend time together and he learns ASL for her. It's so cute. I love this one. It's one of my favorites on the series for sure. And I, of course, gave it a five out of five stars on this reread. I then read and listened to uh, the uh, Scandalous, Desolute, No Good Mr. Bright. That's a very long title. I had to read that um, by Tessa Dare. This is just a short little novella by Tessa Dare. I don't think it is attached to any of her series. Also, Tori got this book for me for my birthday. So thank you so much, Tori. I love you so much. The heroine in this book, her name is Eliza and she has three older sisters. However, her father will not let her be introduced to society um, unless her three sisters are already married. And so she's been waiting for years to be introduced to society to hopefully get a husband and this book takes place kind of like in increments and in years like each chapter is another year past you know and so each year she ends up like running into the no good mr right who's known for being a rake and a rogue and then every time they meet he just can't help but be totally enchanted with her i thought this was great eliza at the beginning doesn't like mr right his name is what's his name in here harry harry he she doesn't like harry at first um and she makes that quite known and she thinks that he does some pretty scandalous and kind of horrible things but then she realizes what things he actually did and there's more than meets the eye to this man she starts to fall in love with him and she cannot stop thinking about him this book gave me a lot of pride and prejudice vibes like not pride and prejudice in general i think like the dynamic between lizzie and mr darcy like i feel like that's the same thing like lizzie didn't like darcy at first but darcy was enchanted with lizzie and everything like that like that's how this felt to me it gave me quite 
really Lizzie and Darcy vibes in here. And then the same thing happens where Lizzie doesn't like Darcy, but then they learn that there's more to Darcy than what everyone is telling her, you know? Um, and so I feel like that was very similar in this one. I, of course, love Tessa Dare's novellas, and I really enjoyed this one. I gave it a four out of five stars. I then read Barbarian King's Mate by um, Ivy Sparks. Now this one, dang it, dang it, dang it, dang it, dang it. Um, I wish I would have loved this. I did not. This was on my November TBR, and I was very much looking forward to this. It's on KU. If you want to check it out, if this does sound appealing to you, go ahead. Um, but unfortunately, did not float my boat. This is the romance between a human named Daphne and an alien man called Gareth. Daphne ends up getting put on Gareth's planet, not knowing that there's actually living beings on there. Her and her boss go to this planet to get some plant samples to see if humans can inhabit this planet. However, her boss gets killed in like the first chapter, so trigger warning for that. And then she gets taken by these evil scorpion looking aliens who are trying to like sexually assault her and she's screaming and then gareth like hears it who's a different alien species and comes running and saves her and kills all these evil aliens then he takes her back to his cave um he has to like keep her secret in his tribe but then the tribe finds out and in order to save her because they were gonna kill her he says that that is his mate and he's gonna mate her and then the, i will say the mating ritual in here that was good that was good that was good, you know? However, everything else, I'm sorry, but it's a no for me. So it was super promising at first, right? That sounds really good. The beginning of it sounds good. The mating ritual was really good, you know? Like, but after that point, once they mated, like it just got boring. But then there was this other side plot with like evil aliens coming in, like the aliens who like took her at first. There's like that whole subplot with them that lasted like 50% of the book and I was just over it. I thought it was boring. Like I didn't want to read about that. I wanted to read about our couple and we didn't get to really do that. We just read about these evil aliens, about them trying to kill them and I just did not care. I feel like it just, it took away from the romance in the story. So gave this one a 2.5 out of 5 stars because of the beginning. The beginning was good. The rest of it, not so much. Sorry if you can hear an obnoxious car outside. You can, you just know that's a giant truck that's just sitting there in my parking lot. And then these last two books I'm gonna talk about are actually books that I finished yesterday. I finished two of these yesterday. We have In Bed with a Highlander by Maya Banks. This is the first book in the McCabe series or the trilogy. This is the romance between Marion, Marin, Marion. I think her name is Marion. Marin, Marion. I'm really bad at pronouncing names. And um, Ewan. Ewan is the clan leader to a clan, a Scottish clan. He found Marion had been protecting his son from a ruthless clan leader rivaling his. Uh, and to repay her, he lets her stay in his keep for a couple of days. But then he realizes that Miriam may, or not, may, or may not be related to the King of Scotland somehow. And so then he realizes that he has to marry her, you know, like he's trying to get her to marry him now. I really love this historical romance. I love the couple and I loved um, the heroine and the relationship between her and Ewan's son. Like it was so sweet, so cute. My only little gripe is the um, talk about women in here. There's a lot of stereotypical women misogynistic comments, you know, um, by some of the men and even the son sometimes and the heroine doesn't agree at all. She's trying to teach him differently. And so I didn't really personally like reading about that, but it is what it's, it's a time period the book is set in, you know? And then I also would have not liked to read about the first like bedding scene. Like if you've read this book, you know, is a little uncomfortable to read about. And so it wasn't necessarily my favorite to read about. I just wish that Ewan would have explained it more to her, like the whole situation, the whole bedding part. And he didn't really, and it kind of like, I, I was really uncomfortable reading that scene, you know? Um, and so I can't wait to read the other books in the series. Of course, I'm really excited. However, this wasn't a full five stars for me because of those little gripes here and there. Um, so I just gave it a 4.5 out of five stars. And lastly, I read Falling From The Sky by Serena Bowen. This is the second book in the Gravity series. I recommend not reading the first book because man, did I not like that book. <laughs> However, this one was totally different. I think since my expectations were so low because I did not like book one, it exceeded my expectations and I actually pretty much enjoyed this. So this is a romance between Hank and Callie. Hank is a professional snowboarder. He's won a couple of Olympic medals. However, during one of his runs, he ends up getting this horrible accident and he ends up getting paralyzed from the waist down. Callie is one of the doctors that works at the hospital he now goes to. She now runs the physical therapy unit that he is a part of now. And so this is the forbidden romance between the two of them. They know they shouldn't be together, but they can't help but be very attracted to one another 
because she is his doctor. Again, surprisingly, I really enjoyed this one. I wasn't expecting to. You can read this book on your on its own if you wish. Like the previous couple like pops in at one point, but you don't really need to read about them in the first book. I recommend not reading the first book. <laughs> As someone who used to be a physical therapy patient, um, I used to go to physical therapy all the time. Um, I really love the discussion of physical therapy in this book. I really love the couple in this book and I really love how Hank like truly became the man he was always supposed to be. He just grew into himself throughout this book, if you know what I mean. It's very hard to explain if you don't read it, but I really enjoyed his development as a character. So yeah, this was a solid read for me. I pretty much enjoyed it, so I just gave it a four out of five stars. So there you have it. Those are all 11 books that I've read so far this month. Please let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to or if you don't feel like commenting any of those things leave me a orange heart emoji down in the comment section down below. Anyways thank y'all so so much for watching and I'll see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all!